Hi, welcome to EPG Patshala Spanish. I am Rajiv Saxena and I teach Spanish in the Center of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and Latin American Studies in the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. We are in the Intermediate Grammar paper and in this module we will talk about diminutives and augmentatives. The objective of this module is to ensure that you learn all the nuances and the rules for using diminutives and augmentatives. You will learn a specific thing of the Spanish grammar where diminutives are used the most when compared to other languages. Learning of the diminutives with other kind of word formations will help build your vocabulary and communicative skills. So, the more you become comfortable with using diminutives and augmentatives, the better your vocabulary and communicative skills will become. So, this is an important chapter. So, pay attention. Diminutives are widely used in Spanish to add a note of smallness or endearment to the noun. In English, we sometimes alter words to indicate smallness or show affection. This is known as a diminutive and typically in English we do it by adding a Y or something similar to the end of the word. For example, dog becomes doggy, cute becomes cutie, kitten becomes kitty, deer becomes dearie, etc. One thing that should be noticed is that we should not confuse the diminutive endings with the ito endings of some irregular pasts like escrito or frito or abierto which we have seen in the chapter dealing with the irregular past. So please do not confuse this ito with the diminutive. Diminutives are used more frequently in Spanish rather than in English. Different regions of Spain and Latin America have their own unique ways of creating diminutives but the most common one is a form of ito. To create a diminutive, drop the O or the R from just about any noun and add ito or ita depending whether it is masculine or feminine. You can add a cito or a cita to words not ending in an O or in an A. So, El Nino, for example, becomes Ninito. El Joven becomes El Jovencito. El Avion becomes El Avioncito. The famous song Chiquitita is from Chica. Chica becomes Chiquitita. The diminutive of Agua is Aguita. The diminutive of mano is manita and why? Because mano is feminine, las manos. Some words while being used as a diminutive require spelling changes because the rules have to be perfect in the spelling and the pronunciation. That is why Spanish requires a spelling change to maintain the sound. So, Paco becomes Paquito with a P-A-Q-U-I-T-O. La Chica becomes La Chiquita, like we have just said. C-H-I-Q-U-I-T-A. El Pedazo becomes Pedacito. Pedazo, A-Z-O, changes to A-C-I-T-O. So, the suffix Ucho or Ucha conveys the idea of ugliness. This ito, ita is the positiveness and the ucho or ucha conveys the idea of ugliness. La casa, house. La casucha, hovel. El cuarto, room. El cuartucho, small miserable room. So, by just by saying Kasucha, it becomes a hovel or kartucho, it becomes a small miserable room. So, by just putting the suffix ucho or ucha, you can make it into a positive or a negative. So, if you want to say casa as casita, it becomes a cute small little house. Kasucha becomes a hovel. Cuarto 
Quartito becomes a small cozy room and Quartucho becomes a small miserable room. Words with a diminutive suffix may take on an independent meaning. El zapato, shoe, becomes la zapatilla, but it is not a diminutive, but the meaning is slipper. La mano, hand, it becomes la mancilla, the hand of a watch or a clock. La bolsa, which is a bag, a big bag. In when it turns into bolsillo, el bolsillo becomes pocket. The meaning changes into pocket. So, zapato is shoe, zapatilla is slipper, mano is hand and mancilla is the hand of a watch, bolsa is bag and bolsillo is pocket. So, you have to be careful that not to confuse it with the diminutive. The nouns of two syllables whose first syllable has ie or ue and which end up in o or a drop the o or a and add esito or esita to form the diminutive the same is true of one syllable nouns ending in a consonant so la piedra stone becomes la piedrecita little stone la fiesta party becomes la fiesticita little party El cuerpo, body, becomes el cuerpecito, little body. La puerta, door, becomes la puertecita, little door. La flor, flower, becomes la florecita, little flower. So we can see that putting these itas, we have made them into diminutives. But why do we use diminutives? This is a very relevant question. Most of the times, we use it to indicate something that is small or perhaps unimportant. Tiene una casita maravillosa. He, she has a little marvelous house. Estudio en una escuelita. I study in a small school. Or to indicate something which is beloved or endearing. Mi abuelita se llama Janaki. Mi abuelita se llama Janaki. My dear grandmother is named Janaki. Mi primo tiene un perrito. Mi primo tiene un perrito. My cousin has a little doggy. Or it can be used to strike a friendly or pleading tone in a conversation. Espera un momentito, señor. Wait just a moment, sir. ¿Puedo tener un vasito de agua? Can I get a little glass of water? So, momentito is just a small moment. A vasito is just a small glass of water. So, you are striking a pleading or friendly conversation. Or to talk to or talk like children. Mira el pajarito. E el osito. Look at the birdie and the little bear. So, mira el pajarito y el osito. Look at the birdie and the little bear. ¿Cuántos dedidos tienes? How many little fingers do you have? So, dedos becomes deditos. ¿Cuántos deditos tienes? It is also possible to have diminutives of diminutives. Chiquito becomes Chiquitito. Poquito becomes poquitito. We aren't limiting ourselves to noun. We can also use diminutives to strengthen certain adverbs. Lo necesito ahorita. I need it right now. Esta cerquita. It's really close by. And to make subtle changes to certain adjectives. Gordo, which is fat, becomes gordito. Chubby, which is the nice complimentary way of saying es gordito. Nuevo becomes nuevecito, brand new. Es un coche nuevecito, it's a brand new car. Some of the other common diminutives are the following. Ete o eta, sete o seta, amiguete, buddy, juguete, toy, patinete, shooter, or elio, elia, silio, silia. Bolsillo, pocket. Pancillo, bread roll. 
tortilla, a small little omelet. So, the other verbs that we can use are when with the diminutives are in and inya, flautin, piccolo, uelo or uela, suelo or suela. Venezuela is actually little Venice, Venezuela. Kiko, Ika, Chico, Chica. Momentico, short moment. So, now from diminutives, let us move on to augmentatives. Augmentatives can be added to nouns, adjectives, adverbs and even names to indicate bigness as well as other ideas such as excessiveness, contempt or disdain. So, an augmentative is used for indicating bigness, largeness or excessiveness, contempt, disdain. In this way, you can say that something is big without adding an adjective like grande to indicate bigness or repugnante to indicate contempt. So, what we can see in this chapter of augmentatives is that they will also change according to the gender and number of the word that they modify. The most common Spanish augmentatives in masculine are on, aso, ote, acho, etc. And they are used in the feminine also which is ona, asa, ota, acha. How do we use these Spanish augmentatives which we have said in masculine are on, aso, ote or acho and in feminine are ona, asa, ota or acha. These augmentatives are less common than diminutives. One, words that end in a consonant take the whole suffix. So, mujer, woman becomes mujerona, a big strapping woman. Animal, animal becomes animalote, big nasty animal. Secondly, when the word to be modified ends with a vowel, the vowel is dropped before the adding the ending. Hombre, man, becomes hombron, big strapping man. Libro, book, becomes librote, big heavy book. Right? So, we can also see like éxito, success, becomes exitazo, great success. Grande, big, becomes grandón, very big. Now, the suffix aso can be applied somewhat freely to nouns to indicate a blow or strikes. Words formed in this way are always masculine. Achaso, to blow, to chop with an axe. Martillazo, to blow with a hammer. Puñetazo, punch with a fist. Cabezazo, headbutt. Codazo, jab with the elbow. These are applied to nouns to indicate a blow or a strike which is very heavy. So these words are always in the masculine. Plumazo, the stroke of a pen. Uevaso, the blow from a thrown egg. Miselazo, missile strike. Sartenazo, a blow from a frying pan, etc. Just like diminutives, the addition of an argumentative suffix sometimes creates an independent word. Soltero, unmarried, becomes el solteron, old bachelor, or la solterona, old maid. La silla, chair, becomes el sillon, armchair. La caja, box, becomes el cajon, drawer, or crate. So, do not confuse diminutive endings with the ito endings of some irregular past like escrito, frito, abierto, etc. Again, keep in mind that the diminutive of agua is agita. The diminutive of mano is manita because it's a feminine verb, las manos. Also, some words will require spelling changes. El lago becomes el laguito, G-U-I. T-O, 
La chica becomes la chiquita. C H I Q U I T A. El pedazo becomes pedacito. P E D A C I T O. There also are the diminutive endings used in various places throughout the Spanish speaking world, which includes Latin America, many parts of South of America, etc. So we have words, suffixes like ete, eta, sete, seta, amiguete, buddy, hoguete, toy, patinete, scooter, etc. Ilio, ilia, silio, and cilia. I have the words called silio and pancilio, etc. So, on an interesting note, we have to emphasize that the Costa Ricans of Latin America, Costa Rica, are so fond of eco endings that they are known all over as ticos. In like English, we can augment words in Spanish. Augmented words indicate either that something is large or that it is undesirable. So, the augmented words in Spanish indicate something that is large in its uh, size or that it is undesirable. Aso, asa, exitazo, great success, perrazo, big, mean dog, on or ona, mojerona, large woman, ricachon, filthy rich, silion, big chair. Ote or ota, grandote, enormous, papelote, worthless bits of paper. Ucho, ucha, acho or acha are also used. Abogaducho of lawyer, poblacho, dilapidated town. So a poblacho means a town which is completely dilapidated. Udo or uda are also used for negative sense. Cabezudo, big head, peludo, hairy. The other Spanish suffixes and endings are the sufijos, which aren't really diminutive or augmentative, but they do change the meaning of the words that they are added to. Ada adds full or load to a word. Boca, mouth, bocada, mouthful, cucharra, Spoon, cucharada, spoonful. Then we have ado or ido, which converts a verb into an adjective. Divertirse, to have fun. Divertido, fun. Hablar, to speak. Hablado, spoken. Al and tal turns a food into its tree or grove. Pera, per. Pear becomes peral, pear tree. Café, coffee becomes café tal, coffee plantation. So I repeat, by using al or tal, turns the food into its tree or grove. Pera becomes peral, café becomes café tal. Ano or ense turns a place into a resident of that place. Bolivia turns into Boliviano, Bolivian. Nicaragua turns into Nicaraguense, Nicaraguan. Ante turns a noun into an occupation. So cantar, the verb to sing, becomes cantante, singer. Estudiar, to study, turns into estudiante or a student. Ansa makes a noun out of a verb. Enseñar, to teach. Enseñanza, teaching. Matar, to kill. Matanza, killing. Ario, converts a location into an occupation. Biblioteca, library, turns into bibliotecario, a librarian. Aso also indicates a bro or strike. Cabeza, head, becomes cabezazo, headbutt. Derecho, right, becomes derechazo, right-handed punch. Dero or dera turns a verb into a place where the verb happens. Beber, to drink, becomes bebedero, a drinking fountain. Fregar, to
to wash becomes fregadero, a sink. Dor or dora turns a verb into an occupation. Contar to count becomes contador, accountant. Explorar to explore becomes exploradora, an explorer. Dura also similarly turns a verb into its result. Picar to sting becomes picadura, insect bite. Ar turns a borrowed English verb into a Spanish one. Esfuriar to surf. Textear to text someone. So, esurfear is to surf and textear is to text someone. Io turns a specific noun into a more general noun. Mercado becomes store, becomes mercadeo, marketing. Papel, the paper, becomes papeleo or paperwork. In the same sense, area turns a noun into a store. Muebles, furniture, becomes muebleria, furniture store. Carne, meat, becomes Carneseria, a butcher shop. In the same sense, ero and era turn a noun into a job or a function. Banco, bank, becomes banquero, banker. Sombra, shade, turns into sombrero, a hat. Esa also converts an adjective into a noun. Bellia, beautiful, turns into belleza beauty the other sentence that i would like to talk about is pobre poor pobreza poverty isimo or isima intensifies an adjective rico rich becomes riquisimo very rich ista turns a noun into an occupation baseball baseball becomes baseballista, baseball player. Violin, violin, turns into violinista, violinist. Mente, turns an adjective into an adverb. Rapida, quick, rapidamente, quickly. Frequente, frequent, becomes frequentemente, frequently. Some places in the Spanish-speaking world also allow for the uses of prefixes, prefijos, to words. Adding the prefixes re and requete is like adding the word very. You should already know how to handle the prefix super. La comida ahí es re buena. The food there is very good. La comida ahí es re buena. So on re we have prefixed re and it becomes re buena or we can say super buena and it becomes very good excellent mi tia es requete loca which means my aunt is very crazy or i can also say mi tia es super loca el examen fue super difícil and the test was super hard so to conclude we would like to emphasize that diminutives and augmentatives should not be viewed as something difficult to grasp at all as we have seen how easy it is to use them. They give energy and passion to a language. Without them, any language would lose its reach to the people. So, I suggest get on to learning the diminutives and augmentatives and start using them in your communication in Spanish and you'll get a lot of applauses. Thank you.